podcast. Uh, Davey, I'm in a little bit of an unusual uh, situation today, ducking in between uh, work and my lunch break. So um, we'll have to, people watching this might be surprised actually this isn't their full time job, it's going so well. <laughs> yeah, I know, but we, we, we have other things to be doing as well, but we're always making time for, for the Women's Hurling podcast. That's it, that's it. Unfortunately, uh, Norma hasn't uh, supplied us with official women's hurling suits yet, so you're repping there for the Burke Sports lads. So thanks again to the guys for sponsoring us. You can check out the details here at burksports.ie or norma.clancy at burksports.ie if you need any gear um, for the rest of the season. I suppose the way the restrictions are going, Davey, uh, there mightn't be too many clubs ordering gear. We might be lucky to, might be lucky to finish the championship, maybe. Yeah, I suppose like this is going out on a Saturday. The, the new restrictions came in last Tuesday, and to be honest, it frustrated the life for me. Tuesday night, sitting down watching it, and I, I I was on my phone and I was listening to it and I was tweeting. And I I don't even know what I was tweeting. I was so I was just so angry over it and so mad. Um, it, it like every every time they opened their mouth, it was a contradiction, and it wasn't good. Like mm. the, the messaging that coming across to the public just wasn't clear and every time someone else talked they were contradicting each other like I just have a few notes <laughs> or wrote down here like, I, I just had to get this off my chest and I, I said I'll wait, I'll wait till, till, till this to, to go and um, so first of all it's safe to play for, for GA players yeah. um, but it's not safe for the 200 people inside in a, a ground to watch the game for yeah. training train wise 15 people can train. That's including your selector or your coach and manager. So there's games going on this, this weekend and they were expecting people to be training with 12, 13 players at a time with your manager and a selector. That's only two in the backroom team. But on a match day, you can have 24 warming up in your own squad. So, and then on top of that, you can have 30 on the field playing the game. And that's two different squads come together. I don't understand where the, they're getting this. I'm not really sure what your issue is here, Dave. It's pretty clear. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, look, honestly, I like, it's just, it's that's amusing. Bananas. Yeah, amusing. it's like, yeah. Like, we talked about this before. I remember one of the first podcasts we did, like, we were kind of saying maybe we couldn't see any games going ahead at all. So, I like, think, like, there's great credit to you. I put out a tweet there during the week. Like, I've never felt safer, like, at a GA match, you know, like, you know, down Thomastown, Ballinamere, the, the officials are there, the COVID officials are there, it's sanitising on the way in, on the way out, like, you know, there's no sharing of bottles, no sharing of anything. It's like, it's been really well ran, like, way better ran than I ever thought the GA would be capable of, to be quite honest with you, when, when, when they brought in all these restrictions. Um, like, from a selfish point of view, uh, does it bother me if there's spectators there or not? No, like for me personally, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, like I, I think as long as the games go ahead and the players can train. Um, but like, obviously, there is a huge, uh, I suppose, mental uh, well being issue, I suppose, in that there's a lot of people in rural communities that have had everything taken away from them, you know, uh, local pubs. And like, you know, there, there's guys there in their 70s and late 60s and that, that their thing is to go and have a few beers in the local pub and chat to people it might be the, the social interaction that they have for the week and you know, go to an old match and talk to someone and watch it and that's their thing for the week that they look forward to and that's all gone and look it is interesting times. I, like, I didn't actually realise there were so many contradictions within <laughs> what you could do in sport like my, th- my thing was that they were stopping people going to watch sports but like that Pubs and restaurants could stay open till half eleven, and you could go into a cinema. I'll tell you now, like I'd much rather be on a bank in Six Mile Bridge watching a match than sitting inside two feet away from a stranger inside in a cinema with air conditioning on or whatever it is. And for me, it was just that stuff that didn't make any sense at all. Um, I had no idea, I suppose, that there were so many restrictions within what you could actually do because we're not training in Offaly at the moment. We're just the boys go up and do their things. We can't actually go into Offaly myself and Kev's from Westmead, and I'm from Limerick. So we just send yeah. them drills on coach note and they run it themselves. So I haven't really been that tuned into what's actually going on on the ground as such. Um, and with the camogie, it doesn't matter. We just have like 70 or 80 training anyway. It's all the one. Like there's nobody. I know he's joking. Yeah. <laughs> so, he messing, just have me down with the lads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go down this evening. <laughs> we'll be safe. We'll be safe. Don't worry. It's fine. But, but, yeah, that's the thing. Exactly. Again, I, earlier on in the summer, I'd have no problem if, if things weren't safe for, for players that if something had to be pulled and games had to be pulled, 
But the fact that they're letting games go on and they're saying that it's safe for games to go on, but they're just pulling these measures out of there. You know? Yeah, it's <laughs> just so, lack, of, lack of, complete lack of communication. Like the, the only way, the only thing you could, I suppose, give the analogy of in sport is, you know, in those situations where the manager might say something in the dressing room, then the coach stands up and says something completely different. And the players just going, ah, Jesus. So when it yeah. happens, like, that's exactly what it is. Like, the manager's going, yeah, no, no, you can have, like, we need to have social distancing, da, da, da. And then but you actually, you can all go on a school bus or, you know, if you're a teacher, you can stand in front of 30 kids tomorrow, but you can't stand up at a bank watching a match, you know, 10 feet away yeah. from someone. It's just like, I think it's the confusion yeah. and the mixed messages and, the, and just the lack of communication between the different government departments that are causing the frustration. Like I said, personally, like, from a selfish point of view, as long as I'm able to go to training, my players are able to go to training, get all the social benefits and physical benefits of that, and we can play our games, like, just purely being selfish, it doesn't bother me whether there's a crowd there or not. Like, I, I put out a tweet during the week there, like, I've coached 50 games, so there's been no one at them, like, so it makes no difference to me, Do you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it took off, yeah, usually I get three likes on a tweet, and one will be from yourself, and, like, probably one from... Some random or bot or that, but so yeah, I was a bit surprised that with that, but and one from women's hurling as well. <laughs> one from women's hurling, yeah. Log on as myself and like my own things. <laughs> yeah, so that took off. But I'll never forget that day. Actually, we would love to play Longford with our second team. Like, I didn't even know Longford had a hurling team. Turns out there was two lads from Limerick playing with them, uh, Bart Hanley and uh, Colin Milan. But uh, like the stand in in Pierce Stadium at the time, there was war over because they hadn't built it properly. So the stand was literally at a 45 degree angle sinking into the ground right? and it was fucking freezing right and because we got like we got off to a great start the ref rode us into the ground so it was just I remember standing on the sideline like the stand is like this it's freezing we're playing Longford it's January and I think it was our or maybe our second game at Kildare and we were just going to Quaid going jeez I thought this county hurling was supposed to be glamorous like it's a lot of shit <laughs> and just for about a year after we just nobody was allowed to mention the word Longford in our dressing room we just brought back bad things, like, but no offence to anyone in Longford I'd say we probably don't have too many people listening to the Longford anyway, but sure enough, yeah, it was good. <laughs> good times. You have to start somewhere, I suppose. I suppose Aaron would want to crack on with, with the real yeah. issues at hand, wouldn't we? Yeah, that's it, that's it. Um, yeah, sure, look, I suppose, I suppose the, go on. Yeah, I, I suppose the kind of the, the form of the show this evening that um, we're going to be kind of run through something that we, we did a couple of weeks ago. We kind of did a mm-hmm. championship, club championship preview. We're kind of just going to be giving an a, a update around the, around the counties and how each championship is going. Mm-hmm. Um, I suppose that's, that's the, the point of this show. Yeah, definitely. Look, let's call a spade a spade. I didn't have time to book a guest stand, right? So we're winging it big style. <laughs> I know, only joke. Um, we just felt we couldn't follow Sarah. You know, Sarah was so controversial, we just had to give ourselves a week, a week breathing space to just reset. Um, I know, there's, look, there's, there's a lot of club action going on around the place. I suppose, look, we said we'd start, we'd start in Kilkenny because um, I suppose that's the one that's closest, uh, closest to me at the moment, obviously being involved in it. And he's like, it, it's a really, really competitive championship down there. Um, I suppose we had a shock straight away. My predictions have been awful, by the way. Absolutely awful. But we'll get to that, I suppose. Um, really? I won't let that go, don't worry. <laughs> no, I, I said I'd better, I'd better flag it myself first before <laughs> you start uh, sticking the boot in. But, yeah, look, I suppose Dixborough got beaten in the very first round by, uh, by St. Lockton's Freshford. Um, which, look, I suppose on paper was a surprise given that Dixborough were the champions. But when you look at the, at the Freshford team, like, geez, they have an awful lot of talent there, you know. Um, like for me, Claire Phelan is probably the best centre back in the country at the moment. She's just a big physical presence on the field, loves driving forward. Um, and that's what she did for them. I saw him playing their second round. Like she was just every time she got the ball, all she was thinking was front foot, front foot, front foot. And then they're just looking for Lydia Fitz or looking for Ann Dalton. And like either of those with the ball in hand are as good as anything in the country. Dalton's just a magician. Like she just, you just can't let her have possession. She just never wastes the ball. Never waste the ball. You just have to stop her getting the ball. Like it's, if she has it in hand, she's either going to put it into a player in a better position, score, or be fouled. And if she fouled, her range, as we saw in the and final last year, is acting up to 70 yards. Like so, just, yeah, they were very, very good. Um, and they hammered to her own second time out. So they've kind of, I suppose, they've, they've probably put themselves in as the, as the favourites in the championship there in Kikini at the moment. They've been the most impressive, um, most impressive of the team so far, anyway. Big time, big time. Um, 
now, as you said, your your predictions weren't were, weren't too good. We we'll move on to to, to my own county, County Clare. Um, yeah. Look, I, I stand. O- I still stand over this. I I still I was. I felt Mackin was giving me a bit of flack on Twitter over this, but like it wasn't an outrageous prediction. Okay, I know they are the Munster champions, but like that was a tough group as well, you know. And like it was, but the Munster champions not coming out of your group the the, the following year, and that's only a couple of months down the, down the line. Yeah, <laughs> they lost. They lost Ina. Uh, they lost Ina, and half time in the game, the last day they were only two points up. So they're a puck of a ball yeah. away from being knocked out of the championship at half time. So like, it's not like they've gone and blitzed the group like and draw no, and I look like a complete tool. But like, they look I, yeah, they got I, out of the group. Fair enough. Yeah, I, 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 I again have had a great start to, to that. They're winning all, all three games and mm-hmm. um, they're they're really the the top top team at the moment in, in Clare. It seems. Um, yeah, no. Your the, the your, your, your prediction, your prediction on Truer to get out of the group, like again, you're saying that you you were lucky with Scarf, but Truer, mm. Truer, Clenar have been kind of on a on an upward trend nearly because they started off shambolic basically. Uh, I think they scored yeah. three or four first game out, had a great yeah. win the second game against against a decent enough bridge team, mm-hmm. but then. Then that's the game you were talking about, the Scarf Tour game. Uh, yeah, I went to it. Really, yeah. really, really good game. Um, was very impressed with Scarf. I'm not just backpedaling saying that. No, I really was. Um, they have a clear game plan. Like their game plan is when they don't have the ball, they get 13 behind the ball and just shut out the opposition. Um, and they leave leave a bit of pace up front and go as direct as they possibly can. And it's very, very effective. They were so efficient up front. They had very, very few wides. Like. Their shot selection, everything was uh, was superb. Uh, Kira Doyle did a really good job on Emer Kelly. Um, kept her very very quiet. Um, and uh, uh, Aoife Power up front was very impressed with just really really pacey. She got a goal right out of the top drawer, same as Dowling's against Kilkenny last year. Just had no space at all, threw it up in front of herself and batted it into the roof of the net. It was absolutely outrageous, absolutely outrageous. It was class. True, it did look like a team who needed a couple of more weeks. Um, like they were doing a lot of good things. Like they they played really well. They had a lot of wides, um, but I like they just found it very hard to break down Scarif. Like I suppose they got caught in the kind of the the old, um, they kind of got caught like Galway used to get back in the day, where they didn't know whether to play Joe Canning at full forward or centre forward or midfield. They kind of needed two Joe Cannings, um, and I think True were the same with Emer Kelly. Like the when she was out centre forward, it was like she had no target inside, and when she was inside. They found it very difficult to get the ball into her and and true and Scarif left two players on her. But yeah, look, it's shaping up to be an Ina Scarif final and clear. That'll be a game well worth going to. And that'll be an absolute cracker. Like two really, really good club teams. Um and look, maybe I didn't give Scarif enough credit for what they achieved last year, but very impressed with them the last day. So um but I'm gonna stick with Ina for the for the championship. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be likely sure. to be stubborn, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd actually been questioned did you pick Ina at the start? Was it not sure? But <laughs> we leave you. No, I thought I think I did go with Ina. I'm fairly sure did yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Onto onto Galway near neighbours. Um, Sarsfields have two from two. Um, straight to the semi final. They're they're obviously still the team to to beat. But uh, yeah. picked Orn Moore how to come out or to to win the Galway Championship, and they're dark oh. horses. <laughs> said they said they'd be dark horses. <laughs> Jeez, you wouldn't. Uh, there's a guy Harry Fendley used to be a big um, big gambler back in the day. The big fella they used to call him, and he said like, you know, anyone who backs anything that isn't odds on is a waster. Like they're only they're a gambler. Like you know, you're not going to make any money. <laughs> you're not going to make any money backing yeah. against Sarsfields. Sarsfields are an outstanding side. Um, Really, really top class. Like, I just to give the analogy, like, just to, the level that those guys are at in the space of about two weeks. Uh, last year with UL, we drew with Galway's first team, Galway's senior team, and beat Sarsfields by six points in the space of two weeks. So they're right up there, like, at that level, at county level. Like, they're not you know, they're different, like, they're you know, um, yeah, different class. Now, that said, they still needed extra time to get over, uh, to get over our draft in the first day. Why they need to play extra time in a group game, I don't know. <laughs> this, we got loads of questions about this, just makes no sense at all. But we'll just chalk that down. I'm not even going to get into it today. We'll just chalk that down into the camogie column. We'll just leave it. That's just things that are camogie over there. Um, but then they absolutely wiped Molly off the park the second day. 
Um, and I think you know yourself, like the first day out as champions is always the dangerous day, like because the opposition are well up for it, and so you know, maybe your last game was in Crow Park or in a final. The next thing you're kind of out in the club ground in the first round on a Tuesday evening, and maybe you're not as up for it as you should be. And look, they obviously got a kick in the arse off that. I'd say Hopper wouldn't have been too happy now with drawing with uh, with our Drahan, so they delivered the second day. But yeah, Oren Moore. Like I said, I did a few sessions up with them last year and I just thought there's so much talent coming through that like they seemed like a team who would be knocking on the door in Galway. Um, and they went really, really well in the other group. They topped the group, so they're straight into the semi-final. Um, and look, if our Drahan come through, as we think they probably will, uh, that'll be a really good semi-final there between uh, Oren Moore and our Drahan. That'd be a cracking game. Um, Aircourt as well going really well in the B just to give them a, a bit of a shout out saw them playing a few times last year they have a player called Mal Burke playing with them who isn't on the county scene at the moment for, for her own a uh, few different reasons she was working away and stuff like that she, we have her inside UL well. uh, like she's probably top three best players in the Ashburn Cup last year really really class proper herder um, she'll be uh, she'll be on the Galway scene next year I'm sure um, but yeah look they're, they're dangerous as well on their day but um, I think it's going to come down to probably the three we predicted at the start, which is Sarsfields to win it and then final against either Ardrahan or Oren Moore. And that'll be a good game as well. Um, that'll be a really good game. Interesting there is actually Thomas has put Sarah Healy back into goals. Um, and she was their main player uh, in the forwards last year, the Galway goalie. So that was an interesting move. So, but yeah, so look, Galway Championship shaping up. The quarterfinals are on tomorrow. Well, when this goes out Saturday, quarterfinals are on today. So um, that's coming down to the business in there now as well. Yeah, and talking about the business end, we, we switch, switch sides of the country. We're going to Wexford, and they're into the semi-final stage of the, their competition as well. And mm-hmm. again, you have the, the all-two reliables, St. Martins and Aula, um, and both going well. Yeah, both going well, um, as expected. Um, we played Aula in a challenge. It was our very first time getting together, and geez, they were class. Um, it's like it's like a retro throwback. Like it's like you know, you watch Sky Sports and you see these kind of uh, you see like Paul Ince and Scholes and these guys playing six aside for United. Like they, that's what it was like. It was yeah, like yeah. watching the old Wexford team. It was just unbelievable. Like like uh, Ursula Jacob and the Kios and the Laces and the stories and all this. And like Jesus, these all absolute legends. Um, so yeah, they're flying and look, Martins are flying and look, it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that they were going to be the two teams that were going to be there, thereabouts at the end of it, you know. Um, and like, I know we touched on this with JJ before, but like, it's amazing that Wexford are Division 2 in the league now. Like, you know, when you look, like they're probably two of the best club teams in the country. Like, if you were given the pick at all to go out and play a championship, you'd be like, you're going to be competitive. You'd be happy enough to take the pick of the two at all, regardless of whatever else they have. Um, class players, like as well, but um, I think Martins would be too good. Like they've just they have a girl, Chloe Fox, um, seen her playing for UCD the last couple of years, and like a sign of a good player, we would have given UCD a couple of trimmings, and she was still class. You know, kind of like her team was taking an absolute trimming, and she was still unbelievable. A real sign of a player, uh, Sarah O'Connor, and these that that would be kind of the top players for DCU. So yeah, look, I think it, it's shaping up to be a Martins out art final again. Um, I think my prediction there was Martins, so we'll stick with that for the stick with that for the moment as well. Uh, sticking here now, but uh, we we'll move over, move over to Cork, and again, yeah, I think it off to a great I, start there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was having a small little giggle to myself when I seen the first round results of uh, Sarsfield losing. I just, uh, I was just thinking back to the podcast, but they were back on track, and um, mm. a bit of a or a bit of an opposite here um, with Cork only into the second round of their championship, um, while yeah. other, other other counties are into semi final stage. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, Look, we have Liam Cronin coming on the podcast next week, so we can we can suss out his thoughts on that as to whether he feels it might impinge their preparation a little bit. Um, yeah, like the yeah, maybe it's not infringing their preparation from what we're hearing, but <laughs> I can't say too much about that. Um, yeah, completely got it wrong. Like, did not see Glen Rovers uh, beating Sarsfields at all. Like, just couldn't see it happening. Um, again. Like John, not giving excuses for Sarsfields or anything like that. Like I think the the champions are at their most vulnerable in the first round. I think, you know, you might have seen it over the years, Davy. Every team needs an old kick in the arse at some stage during the year, um, and you're just hoping that it doesn't come in a knockout game where you have to wait twelve months to rectify it. Do you know? Um, so look, I don't think it'll have done Sarsfields any harm. They went back into the losers group there last week and put up a big score. And um, like Douglas have been motoring well there as well. 
Um, like Douglas have a like, like they have uh, Julia White and 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 Katrina Mackey up front. Like Jesus, like a county team would be hard enough to handle with all those two flying around the place. So like they should be they should be delivering as well. Like there probably hasn't been enough games played in Cork to really know who the form team is either. I suppose. Um, so they're, they're kind of the format is strange there. They have their divisional teams going into one side of it, and then they've losers groups and all this kind of stuff. So it's probably a bit early to say yet. Um, as to whether we want to change the prediction there or not, but sure, look, we'll stick with Sarsfields that they'll uh, they might dig me out of the hole before the year is out. We don't know really enough about it to to, to comment too much, I suppose. Yeah, one, and we go out there now. Whereas then Watford, um, I suppose the big two clashed and the, the first round, but it, it eventually got abandoned with with an injury mm. to the player, and we just yeah. wish that that she's okay first of all. Mm-hmm. Um, but. And then Beck Carton kind of since tore it up for De La Salle. And yeah. You, the timing of which the... was delicious, I must say. Yes, yeah. exactly, yeah. <laughs> just, just for people that don't know, like you kind of went on a bit of a rent because um, yeah. it was a, a list of the 50 greatest uh, Komogi players uh, announced and mm-hmm. Beck wasn't on the list of 50. Yeah. Um, so you kind of pulled a few clips you had, a few <laughs> stats you had and put it all on a, on a thread on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, and in fairness, like, we've invited Clean on the show and she said she will come on, actually. I just haven't got her on to organise it, so we'll definitely get her on next week with Liam. The Clean is sound like, and draw. look, when you're putting together any of these kind of things, like, it's all subjective, right? So they're her best 50 players, according to her, right? So that's, she's entitled to say whoever she wants, okay? But you're saying she's wrong. <laughs> I'm saying she's wrong because, like, <laughs> just, like, to put together any list and leave Beck Carton out of it, I'm sorry, it's just, it's just completely invalidates it in my eyes. And like, obviously I'm biased, I've coached her in UL, but like, the stats speak for themselves. Well, they don't speak for themselves, I put them up on Twitter with clips. <laughs> but they do. <laughs> like, in the last two years, she's won two All-Stars, been the top scorer in the Senior Championship, uh, has won Waterford GA Personality of the Year two years in a row. Not, not the Camogie one, the actual overall GA one. Uh, has won four Ashburn Cups in a row, been on player of the tournament for the last three years in the Ashburn Cup and went out and hit 4.16 in a club match the other day. And, like, and you're telling me she's not in the top 50 Camogie <laughs> players the last 50 years. Come out of it, the fuck. There's players on that list, who aren't. I wouldn't hey, let them take her boots out of the box. Sorry. <laughs> I wouldn't let some of those players on that list take her boots out of the box when they arrive. So they wouldn't. Oh, Jesus. Well, look, it's subjective. And uh, look, you know what? It's, it's good that there was discussion around it because... Um, Look, this is what we're doing is we're trying to get more discussion around Camogie and look, lists like that and stuff like that are helpful from the point of view of sparking discussion. But I'd say maybe in future anyone making a list, maybe start with bet and then uh, <laughs> you know, go from there. We like we like leaving messy, like I don't know. The justification, I just didn't get the justification. She hasn't done enough against senior players. I was like, oh man, <laughs> oh, man. What are you talking about like what? And, and, and bet is only gonna get better as well. Oh, absolutely no doubt. And like what you have to remember as well, she's achieved all this without ever playing in an All Ireland semi final. Like Watford have never got to an All Ireland semi final, so she's been top scorer in the championship, playing two games less than most of the teams, as well. Yeah. Like and it's just like unbelievable. It's it's, it's kind of scary to. I think funny it. actually. We have Kate Mack playing in goals for us now down in Thomastown, and like shoot, Kate Mack would have been a Kikini stalwart out the field for years and years. And uh, first night we put her into goals is below in Watford. Uh, against De La Salle in a challenge match and about five minutes in Bet picked up a ball and kind of wandered in and I suppose Kate wasn't used to playing in goals and presumed that she would have done what every other Camogie player would have done and kept going into around the 14 before she took a shot Bet pulled the trigger edge of the dealer he tore the net off the stanchion and she didn't even move <laughs> <laughs> she came off the water break we were giving out there like geez like, you know, if you don't want to be in goals just say it but at least try and, try and move when someone shoots like absolutely minded her um, yeah, tough class, but yeah, Waterford Championship shaping well, up. Like that, that was a great game. Um, yeah, that was that was a great game by all accounts. Uh, Got here, played with the wind, and a bit of a slope below in passage as well in the first half. And uh, De La Salle were on the way back and had pulled back. Well, unfortunately, that injury uh, occurred. That game is on, uh, which is off the top of my head. I think it's Saturday this weekend as well. So that's that's a game I wouldn't mind seeing at all. Now two really good teams. Um, I said it before here, I was so impressed with De La Salle when we played them in the challenge match. They just look so organised and that. Um, but look, Galtier, they are an intermediate champions, so they're not going to lie down and, and give up their county crown too easily. They're, I, they're, them two are going to meet again 
uh, in the county final, I think. Uh, like, Neve Rocket's team, St. Anne's, had been flying as well, and, and Rocket had put up a big score in, in their early rounds as well. So, um, they might be a dark horse. Kappa Queen last year's finalists had been beaten, which was a bit of a surprise. But, um, yeah, look, it's going to come down to those two. Uh, but, geez, yeah, 4 16 in a club game. Like, I've never seen anything like it, so it's, it's fair yeah, shooting, isn't it? <laughs> Angus Clark, I think, hit 117 in Westmead at the weekend for Castletown Gagan with a coach to Angus last year. He's top class. Like, 117 is unbelievable. Like, 416 is just... Well, if you went out and hit it's 416 magic, as a team, you'd be happy right enough. Now. You'd be happy enough, lads. Like, if, we hit, if we can hit 416 now, lads, we're not going to lose too much today. You know? <laughs> but I wonder what the opposition were thinking. Like, you know, like surely the folk they could have done something about it. Like, if you'd be thick enough if you let an opponent score 416 as good as she is. Like, anyway, it's rough. Yeah. By all accounts, they did try and by all accounts, they did try and stop her, if you know what I mean. But um I was just about to say that, that, that <laughs> like when you can't mark her, that's the only other option is to yeah, yeah. get the hatchet out. Just just get the hatchet um, out, but uh, not that we wouldn't advocate that kind of thing, of course. No, um but yeah, look, but the Walford Championship is shaping up to be an interesting one, it'll be good. So looking forward to seeing uh, seeing that get down to the closing stages as uh, well. Excellent. Um, I suppose we'll go do a quick, uh, just a quick roundup of, of our other predictions. Well, your other predictions. Um, yeah. Start off with Dublin, St. Vincent's uh, you had, had here. Yeah, look, there's only one round played in Dublin so far as well. They're a bit behind as well. I think they started off with some sort of cup competition, which I presume is kind of a county league, um, county league affair. Um, yeah, Vincent's, Vincent's won, won comfortably enough the last day against Luke and Sarsfields, um, who would be one of the other strong teams. Um, like the club scene in Dublin isn't that strong. Vincent's are quite dominant. Like there's a couple, they're probably the standout team, and then there's a few even teams around them, like Jude's, Kilmacud, Lucan, Bally Bowden, um, around them. But look, they're the standout team there, and it would be very difficult to see them, um, see them being beaten. Um, but look, as you say, it's too early really to judge any kind of form there because there's only been one round played really. And another one that's too early to say anything is in Offaly Saint Rhinas again. They're on lockdown. Hopefully, coming out of lockdown uh, this this yeah. weekend, you'd be hoping. But you can, yeah, did a few, did a few rounds played, all right? And uh, count Rhinus, anything like that? No, I, I think the the word is, and we're hoping now with with, with the Offaly lads as well. The word is that the lockdown is going to finish tomorrow. Um, so that's Sunday, and that uh, I think the plan in Offaly is that there's going to be a round of football on Tuesday, and we're out in the following weekend. So I presume the Camogie be something similar. Um, ah, look, yeah. Rhinus. Ryan has been kicking themselves. They didn't win that All Ireland last year. They've two of the best, two of the best forwards in the country. Never mind in the county, um, in Kay Kinney and Siobhan Flannery, and um, they have a really good coach as well. A guy called Mark Dunn and his sister Molly from Aircourt in Galway would have been involved at county level. Molly would have played for Galway over the years. And Mark would have coached, uh, would have managed Galway back in the day. So they've practically an inter-county set up there at club level in Offaly, and look, they're not going to be touched. Like you know, they're they have bigger uh, bigger ambitions than than retaining their Offaly championships. You know? Yeah, and over to, to our near neighbours, uh, Tipperary, where you had Burgess. Yeah, look, board, like there, there's been a couple of rounds played in Tipperary. Drummond Inch gave Clonolty a bit of a trimming. Um, early doors, um, Clonolty won the next day out. Burgess had been pretty dominant. Again, for a strong county, there is a bit of a gap there between kind of maybe the top couple of teams and the rest. Um and look, I think, yeah, we'd gone with Burgess to maybe right the wrongs of Drummond Inch uh, have started off um, sent a serious signal of intent by, by giving uh, Clonolty a bit of a hammer in the first round. Um, again, like, there probably hasn't been enough games. Like, there, there's been games, but the top teams haven't played the top teams, so it's hard to know. I'll stick with Burgess for the moment, but Drummond Inch have definitely shown signs that they're, uh, that, that, that they're not going to give up their title too easily either, but um, there's another round of games in, in Tipperary this weekend, and Pictured in for the championship become clearer after that once they move on to the knockout stages then. And I suppose the kind of most surprising result on paper and was was the one above in Antrim. Mm-hmm. Lockheed was Lockheed was the first time they lost in seven years. Um, again, that was a surprise for everyone to see. Yeah, because if you remember when we were talking, we kind of didn't focus specifically on Antrim at the start. We were kind of talking about the Ulster Championship. Um, and we were saying that we expected, I suppose, obviously Slot Neil to come out of Derry and then Lockheed to come out of Antrim again. And like, I suppose a lot of people say Sarsfields have been one of the unluckiest teams in the last few years because they kept running into this class uh, Slot Neal team and maybe they could have won a bit more before they won this year. Geez, Lockheed went very close in a couple of Ulster finals as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, they, they lost for the first time in seven years to Ballycastle to McQuillan's. Um, 
And like we mentioned at, in some podcast, I can't remember when, but I mentioned I thought Antrim were a serious shout for the intermediate championship. Um, and like this is another signal like that if, if there's teams in the county starting to compete with Loch Eel, like that there is talent coming through. They have a savage management team. Um, the boys McKillen and, and the boys that were over Antrim when they got them promoted back to Lee McCarthy there around the end of the last decade. Um, so yeah, look, there's a sign there that there's Stearns and Antrim and I, I think that our, of all the stupid predictions I've made, the one that I think could be close to the hitting the money is Antrim for the intermediate. Depending on how, of course, if we get a championship and everything and everything goes ahead as normal. But yeah, fair play to, to McQuillan's and Ballycastle there. We played up there a few times with Kildare over the years. Class hurling uh, community played in Loch Eel as well. They love their hurling up there, like up, up around the glens and stuff like that. So fair play to them. They're obviously doing great work up there as well. Listen, we kind of probably jumped the gun a small bit, just presuming it was all rosy for Loch Eel, but that the results probably suggest otherwise. And, and your prediction, maybe, if, if, if there's an inter-county championship, that, that might come to fruition. Yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose, I suppose, I suppose the, 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 the funny trend there in, all, in a lot of the counties is apart from Drum Inch, like a lot of the champions were vulnerable in the first round, you know, um, and maybe a lot of it comes down to the fact that I suppose the clubs have had more time to prepare together as units, you know, with their, every club has all their county players in, has had a focus, everyone is fresh, um, and just gave them an opportunity to have a right cut off, off the champions. Like you're definitely a sitting duck in the first round when you're, but, you know, when you're the when you're the number one ranked team, and you're you're there to be shot at, like you know. So, look, I've no doubt a lot of these teams will come back. You know, like we often lost early in the year with UL, and it's like, look, beat us, beat us in February, and then we'll talk. So it doesn't really matter, like doesn't matter to talk. <laughs> still, yeah. Just when you're saying that, um, the, the when the champions win the following year, their, their first round game is always the sitting duck. Uh, we played Six Mile Bridge this year in championship. And <laughs> They have made us, so I don't know. Is that all? Is, is that always the case? <laughs> Look, that might be more of a reflection well, we, on yourselves, Davey, than as opposed to any well, we, trends, we'll, so. hey, we'll, we'll move on from that straight away, anyways. And I suppose from like from the ten predictions we made for the well, you made for the the club championships, the club club championships. Um, do you want to stick or twist or with any of them, or are you, are you happy enough sticking? Look, I'm stubborn out, so I'm going to stick on all of them, right? But I'm not, I would be lying if I said I wasn't a small bit worried about a couple of them, all right? Um, maybe, maybe it was a bit premature to back against Galtier and Watford. Um, and look, I was awful impressed at Scarif the last day, like, seen him in the flesh. So, <laughs> yeah. That. <laughs> That's one I'm not letting you twist that anyway. No, look, I'm not going to change. I'm not going to change. But if I had to say that, look, if we're looking at a 10 team accumulator, they're the two who kind of go, mm, okay, maybe. But look, I'm sure Beth will get me out of the shit in Watford. And uh, it would be a nice poetic justice for me if she did. And um, I'm sure, yeah, look, maybe Ina, Ina, yeah, look, we'll, we'll maintain neutrality in that. But look, Ina might, the Ina were flying as well, to be fair. Like, um, yeah. They're a really, really good side. There isn't a whole point between Ina and Scarif over the last couple of years either. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll stick. We'll stick on them for the moment, and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, look, and, and you you keep saying it was my predictions as well, and I've noted that. And uh, Sarah, the- Sarah Donovan, and Sarah Friday have agreed to to start doing predictions for us. So we're going to start that from next week on, and you'll be going into the mix as well. So it'll be very much you against the two girls. So I'm just going to sit back and. Because it's grand air throwing shit over in the seat going, you said this, you said that. So <laughs> that's, that's the thing, right? So let's see. We'll see you now going forward now whether, uh, whether you're able to back up all the talk now or not, Davey. Exactly. But the only thing, if them 10 predictions came through, I'd be most definitely saying it's our predictions then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if they do come true. Look, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But you're out exactly. yourselves this weekend in the championship anyway, Davey. So you get a chance to back up your talking on the field first of all anyway before you do anything else. <laughs> It's it's about time because I've been out long enough. But I suppose be like that's a that's a wrap up of the club camogie scene. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, just jumping the gun a small bit because there was talk. Um, there was talk this this week about county boards and um, the club or GA in general doesn't have the money to run an inter county mm-hmm. inter county season. And it, it was kind of floated around on Twitter and and on other social media uh, platforms. But do you, do you envisage this being a problem with the Camogie Inter-County Championship? It could, it could well be, I suppose, Davey. Like, um, it was very interesting. There's a few counties come out. I know Billy Foley and Westmead, from a GA point of view now, the Cardo guys, the Loud guys. Um, and I suppose 
it, it, like a lot of those counties are reliant on gate receipts from club matches to fund county teams. Um, so there's probably two things working in Camogie Association's favour. No one's going to club games in a lot of counties anyway. Uh, certainly not in Limerick. I always speak for Limerick. You know, that's tongue in cheek. To be fair, there's great crowds in Kilkenny. You know, done the last couple of weeks, but um, and also the cost of running a county Camogie team, while while I suppose not insignificant, would probably be more in line with the cost of running a good club team. Like the couple of years I was with G and Arog, I know that our final budget came in and around the same as what um, we would have spent with Limerick Camogie. Um, the couple of years that we were there. Now, look, that varies from county to county as well. You go down to Cork and you have four or five different video analysts and, and all this kind of stuff. And that, John, you know, probably the cost and starts to go up there. But look, it is, it's definitely a worry that you have come out and said they're going to make central funding available for counties to make sure that they can compete and that they can pay it back to them at a later date. I suppose we don't know whether the Camogie Association have that kind of funding or that, I suppose, that cash in the bank to help counties out from that point of view. So it'll certainly be interesting. Um, Maybe counties are just going to have to completely review how they're going about it. Like I suppose, like if it came to it, David, we're well, not putting you on the spot now, Ratton, but like, you know, like you get a pile of gear, you know, all your food, everything, travel expenses. Like, do you think players would do without some of that if it meant that counties could definitely compete next year? Or is look, are, and, I, and I'm not saying you're not entitled to it because I'm a big players guy. You are entitled to it, right? But if it meant the difference between being able to compete and not compete, do you think you'd be able to do without some of that stuff for a year or two? Not putting me on the spot, no, but putting me on the spot. Yeah, um, yeah, essentially, yeah. <laughs> it's a tough question, though. No, look, I'm not saying you're not entitled to it, because you certainly are. The effort that goes into it and everything. Don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that at all. Yeah. I'm saying if it came to it. It's, it's a difficult one, because you don't want to set a precedent for X amount of years down the line and they come back and say, no, they done well with it in 2020 and 2021. Yeah. And this is the way going forward. You don't want to do that because the effort that uh, GA players, Camogie players, get a football players, ladies get a football players, everyone puts in at inter-county level is, is massive. Mm-hmm. Um, for one year off, again, I, I would, personally, I would do without, we say, the likes of the gear, um, I seen Shane Dowling came out, came out and said players would do it without travel expenses. Um, I'm not too sure about the travel expenses. Mm. Um, for players living within the county, it's probably more, it's easier to do without it. But if you're living in the, like, the likes of Cork and having to come back to, to Ennis to train, students coming back into your county to train, it's no, a lot more difficult. Um, and again, you, you might suggest doing a kind of pulling it back a small bit, but I think travel expense is the one thing that I would say that's, that's necessary um, mm-hmm. because everyone is not working. There's lads mm-hmm. that are students in college. There's lads that aren't working um, that have maybe lost their jobs or something, especially around this, the pandemic. Um, mm-hmm. The travel expense is the one that kind of keeps them no definitely at a bare minimum lads shouldn't be out of pocket you shouldn't be financially out of pocket and unfortunately a lot of camogie players are because there is no travel expenses so exactly. but that doesn't mean it's right um, but yeah I'd agree with you. and you know, I think you might have hit the nail in the head there it could be a case that every individual on the squad might just have to have their own deal with the county board like draw. So we'd see the club level there last year at John Kill we would have had lads coming from Dublin and everywhere for, for training and Kev used to slip them a few quid to pay for the bus or whatever but like, you know, it didn't mean that everybody else thought they were entitled to it. You know, everybody knows, you know, everybody's circumstances are different and could be a lot out of work, as you say, or students or 20 euros a lot to students still, no matter how, uh, how big uh, it goes up or if you're coming down a couple, a couple of times a week. Last thing, I suppose, David, to get your opinion on, like the GPA came out there last, last week or 10 days with this idea for a split season. Uh, I think from a coach's point of view, it's absolutely superb. Uh, from a player's point of view, what do you think of it? Savage. Completely agree with it. Um, and the thing I like most is we know when we're starting, we know when we're finishing inter county or club. I, I, I wasn't, I'm not too sure if it was club first or inter county first. I think, I think they want to look at starting county first, yeah. Yeah. But then you have a defined season for club. Once July hits, I think July was the date, um, you're gone into your club and everyone's back together and you can concentrate full bull. And you're not going to be burnt out from a big, long, hard season that started straight after club. 
that's that's an important part as well. That mm-hmm. there has to be a timeline that cl- or the inter county can't go back in a pre season type mode mm-hmm. until whatever date they set. And that, but policing that you know yourself is <laughs> is going to be next to impossible. And county yeah. managers want one one up on someone else and a different county. But if they could get that right, it's a, it's a fantastic idea for players. I think it's a fantastic idea for supporters um, to, to support both county and, and being able to support club um, in the definitely. middle of summer as well. No, definitely. Like my, look, my attitude towards club has changed completely this year because my experience before wasn't great. Like It was fine. Um, and you know, you, you've been involved with clubs there and they're nice lads and all that and it's great. But re- the reality is you're going to play in challenge matches. You're missing four or five players. You have a few playing county football, a few playing county hurling. And you know in your heart and soul, this is a waste of time because like, what you're actually going to be trying to do is get those five lads back and plug them in 12 or 13 days before championship and try and hope everybody's on the same page. And it's very difficult to do. And for me, it takes away, as a coach, like, I, I always feel like, like I, I didn't get to have a proper impact on a team because you're not training the, the championship team. Like You go down some days, you could have 10 or 12 of the championship team missing from training. You're kind of going, what's the point of this? Whereas this year, with both Thomastown and Ballinamere, Every time we've gone training, it's like your full squad is there. You can get so much done and you feel, okay, fair enough. If we get beaten, well, we've got beaten, but we've, we've, got, we've reached our full potential here. Maybe we just weren't good enough. Like, whereas the times over the years with clubs, I've kind of just felt maybe, and it's not an excuse that, you know, I wasn't satisfied that I got the most out of them because I didn't have the access to them. Whereas now, at least if we're beaten in whatever, look, it sits a little bit easier because you say, look, yeah, look, we had a crack. We had everybody. We've no excuses and it is what it is. Um, but I think yeah, like being able to plan out your year and going look I know for a fact we're going to be playing county until June and I know I can go away for a couple of weeks holidays and I know we're going to have two weeks then before championship starts with the club and we can play challenge matches and I think it's just better for absolutely everybody you're, even your club player like I know you're talking about their long inter county season your club player doesn't want to be back in January training flat out for seven or eight months and then maybe lose his place to a county player We're not like throw that like but like, oh, yeah. nobody wants to do that. Everybody just wants a fair chance to compete. Short season. Um, and I'm thoroughly enjoying club at the moment. Like, it's just changed. It's just completely changed my attitude towards it. It's just so, so enjoyable. Like, we go down to Thomastown now tonight. We record this on a Friday. And we'll have 33 or 4 below. And they're a great bunch. And it's like everybody's there. And we're just preparing. We'll have them in three groups of 10. <laughs> Very, important. Very important. Very <laughs> important. <laughs> um, so yeah but look that's it Dave I think we've, we've rattled on we've rattled on enough there now that is thoroughly thoroughly enjoyable I must say chatting away these things let's go back to work now here below Windy Walford Walsh Park is over there looking, looking well it's about 10 yards away and I suppose I'll have to go in here now and talk to a pharmacist who used to play hurling for Kilkenny so I can't complain too much um, too much about it uh, next week next week we have Liam Cronin on which I'm really looking forward to because I suppose um a lot of what we're doing is trying to put the players, the Camogie players on the same platform as the, as the men's players. And I suppose he's gone straight from coaching Clare Hurlers into coaching the Cork Camogie team. So really looking forward to his insights there as to what the differences are, what's better or worse on both sides and just, uh, and just what level he thinks Camogie is at that. So no better man to give us the incentive. So we're looking forward to that. Um, but that's it, Davey. Best of luck at the weekend in your game. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Excellent. Excellent.